So hello, welcome to chapter six. In this chapter, we talk about structures, but so much more. There is a mid-chapter surprise in this book, and I'm sure that it's so surprising that it's caused a few too many people to drop out of a computer science, first computer science course. And that's because in sections 6.1 through 6.4, we're learning the C language. And we're learning just what a structure is. It's a simple, beautiful, elegant concept. It's a sort of a wrapper for a whole bunch of types. It groups them together so that you can create a new type. And it really, at this point, is the last foundational component of the core C languages, core C language. And then in section 6.5, the authors pivot to talking about data structures, and that is the applications of C structures. And it's the foundational notion in computer science. It's the kind of thing where how do you build a Python dictionary in C? Um, and and so this, this is a, a pattern we call the knee of the curve, where things are going along just fine up to 6.4. Like, oh, here's a for loop, and here's a string, and here's an array. And here's even a pointer, that, that's not that hard, and structures are not that hard. But then when we start talking about applications of structures, what we call data structures. And structures was named because data structures was a concept. But how we use structures is a quite an, a next level thing. We're kind of leveling up. So I want you, starting from here, chapter six is the last real chapter that I'm going to cover. But it is expanding because chapter six is the beginning of a whole not, uh, additional course, a course on data structures. So I want you, if you're rushing, I want you to slow down, I want you to take your time and understand because if you understand this, you can literally, you have a doorway into a lot of computer science. We'll talk about recursion even <laughs> by the end. And so just don't rush work on mastery. These are complex concepts. They are not natural to understand. And so before we start, I want to do something different. I want to read you a poem. One of my favorite poems from Robert Frost. Uh, I was lucky enough, fortunate enough to be a good friend of Bob Frost, who was a grandson of Robert Frost. Bob Frost had a connection to the University of Michigan. Robert Frost has a Michigan and University of Michigan uh, connection. And um, I loved the, this poem that I'm about to read you uh, long before I met Bob Frost, the grandson of Robert Frost. So the poem that I talk a lot about, and really it's one line, miles to go before I sleep. This is the poem called Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening. And to me, it, it speaks of the notion that journeys are not short nor easy, and it's okay, accept that. So here we go, Dr. Chuck and poetry. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it queer to stop without a farmhouse near, between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. So the essence of this is that you have come a long way to get to 6.4 in this book. And it may feel like you've gone long enough and you should just pat yourself on the back. But after 6.4, there are miles to go before I sleep. But the good news is 
when you're done, you can relax. So what I want you to do is take your time. Things get much more complex really fast going forward. And I don't want to lose you 